Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought I would do a video looking at some of the change logs or updates that we've had over the last, uh, well, about a week or so since I haven't really been covering them. And uh, the reason to do this is since the update 1.85 is either out now, <laughs> since this video is uploaded, or it's going to be out in about an hour or so, uh, I thought why not just get you guys up to speed of what changes there have been, you know, before update 1.85. So if there's any new stuff that you didn't know about, let's have a look. So, uh, let's get into it. The first one is a server update, and it was the naval tutorial. It has been added. Now, unfortunately, the servers are down on uh, War Thunder right now for the updates, but uh, basically, if you go into the top left, there should be like a tutorials tab, and uh, if you play through the naval tutorial, or any of the tutorials, I believe, but especially the naval one, You'll get yourself some GE. You'll actually get 100 GE for the naval tutorial. It takes you about 10, maybe 15 minutes. It's not very long. Uh, it gives you a little bit of GE, and also it teaches you the basic mechanics of naval uh, naval forces. So I think it's a good thing to do, and if you haven't done any of the tutorials up there, I would just go through them really quick. It might take you an hour, hour and a half. You get some GE, and uh, you get some knowledge about how each of the things work. Maybe if you don't want to do the simulator stuff, because obviously it's a little bit harder for a new player, but yeah, I mean, if you are new or if you are a veteran, uh, you might as well do them. The next uh, one, uh, the change log, is a bug in the boat control basics tutorial where a vessel would delay initiating the stop action when requested has been fixed. So, uh, simple, <laughs> simple, uh, simple change uh, to the naval test. Uh, one of the things that it does make you do quite a lot in the naval test, which is a little bit annoying, is to stop your boat. And, uh, well... There's no real need uh, to stop, in my opinion. It would be much better if it was like an area uh, that you could do it in. Uh, but the the tutorial itself works pretty well. It's a little bit, little bit clunky if you have played naval before, but if you're new to it, it's a good thing to do. The next one uh, is an update with a bunch of bug fixes. So the first one is a bug where in time delay to escape battles was lengthy on weaker PC configurations has been fixed. So if you get donked on in battle or if you want to leave because you're out of respawns, it's now easier to do on lower end PC configurations. It'll be interesting to see uh, with the new uh, map the Afghanistan map and also the Vietnam map, how lower end PCs actually deal with them because I'm kind of worried because there's a lot of stuff to those maps and on lower end PCs uh, there's a lot of interactions going on so we're going to have to see how that goes. I feel like the Afghanistan map is going to, be, going to only be limited to an arcade one for now but if it's on a realistic one and it's actually the full map that we explored, oh god your frame rate is not going to like it. Your PC is going to be screaming just like mine was on the dev server. A bug where the icon for ammunition refilling didn't disappear when joining airstrike in ground vehicles AB has been fixed. Well that's nice. Uh, there's a few of these uh, little things where icons don't disappear or reappear when they should do, so for me it's nice to see them fixed. A bug in some cases, the model of the aircraft wasn't displayed and airstrike for ground vehicles AB has been fixed. This still happens in air realistic. Uh, it also happens in ground realistic sometimes, uh, so uh, it's nice to see they fixed it in arcade, but I don't know what causes it, and it seems to happen a very small amount of the time, but it still does happen, <laughs> and, uh, it would, and it normally doesn't happen to you, but it happens to a person you're playing against. So what you'll see is you'll just see a pilot flying about the air. It's as if he's on a broomstick out of like Harry Potter or something. Like it, I don't know why it happens, but it can it can be really annoying and ground realistic where you know you dropped your bombs, uh, you're flying around, you're trying to keep the air clear, and then a crazy man uh, who was flying like Wonder Woman is able to just nail you with a plane that you can't see. Uh, a bug where in VR headsets the internal parts of players' helicopter models were shown has been fixed. Nice. Um, they did say they were going to uh, uh, fix some bugs for VR, and that seems to be one of them. I That is one thing in 2019 I do want to do. Uh, I do want to invest uh, in some VR stuff. Uh, I'm not really sure what. Uh, if you guys have any... Uh, if you have have any experience with any of the VR headsets, you know, if you want to put in your opinion on, you know, which one to get or which one do you think is the best value for money, all of that stuff would be nice to see. So, uh, 
if if you wouldn't mind, you know, putting in the comments. If you have any, let us know. Uh, a bug where the ground vehicle turret and with stabilizer was turning faster than normal on opposite hull rotation has been fixed. God damn, they fixed it. Right. <laughs> This was a bug that's been in the game since the beginning, and uh, it is uh, it is one you may have seen in the Chinese uh, tank videos I did. Basically, if you are turning your turret left and you push your hull right, what will happen is the turret will just turn crazy fast. Right. So if you're in an engagement and a guy is coming at you, what you would do to increase your turret rotation speed as it was turning this way, you would turn your tracks this way, angle it and you'd get on target first. Uh, but uh, they fixed it. <laughs> so it is. A, it was a bug. I'm sure it was reported many times and it did look very unrealistic, especially with stuff which had a stabilizer. And if you knew about the bug, you could really... Not really break the game, but it would give you an unfair advantage, especially since it was a bug. So it's nice to see that it's fixed. It's just from a personal point of view, uh, snapping the turret around after like moving really quickly. It's kind of, kind of annoying that it's gone, but I understand why it is. Notification of selected game mode change by user when switching a vehicle preset or nation has been added. Uh, so this is something I was struggling with on the dev server, but uh, on the live server, there is a little checkbox in the bottom right and on the dev server that you can do it. The issue I was having with the dev server was I would uncheck it uh, so it wouldn't change and then I would uh, quit the game because I'd have to change some settings for recording, come back in and it would be checked again. So uh, it was, it, it kept screwing me up uh, when I, every time I was doing recordings. So that is something uh, that just make sure you've checked out on the live server once this dev server gets ported over to live. Uh, but overall, uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, it is a little bit confusing if you don't know about the change. So make sure you know about this change and make sure you understand how it works in the uh, War Thunder. In the vehicle setup menu, the information about the game mode, which is connected to current vehicle presets, has been added. So that's how you check everything. Uh, so once uh, you're in the vehicle setup menu, once you're looking at your presets, it will tell you, you know, uh, which preset for what uh, mode you want to use. I personally don't use presets. I'm old school. I don't really enjoy presets. I understand why they're there. Uh, but for me, for me, I'm just not interested in uh, using them just because I, I already know where all my vehicles are I also know uh, what vehicles I want to use and generally as somebody who uh, plays a vehicle, uh, aces it and then you know gets out of it presets are not really that useful for me the next uh, set of change logs was on the 12th this is 1.83.1.13 and a bug where changing uh, the screen resolution would cause the area of movement of the cursor to become limited has been fixed. That is an interesting bug, but luckily it is fixed. A bug while following a bomb, where in some rare cases it would show the bomb outside the camera view, has been fixed. Oh, that's nice. So, if you don't know, uh, I don't know how this works on console, but on PC you have a button which is designed to follow the bomb. Uh, so once you dropped it, you can follow it down to wherever, you know, you're, uh, you're hitting. Now this can be used for cinematic purposes this can also be used for training purposes this could also be used for do I have to hit this target again because I've missed it like a dumbo like all of this stuff now uh, I have it bound to you uh, I don't know if that is the default control, but it is a lovely little cinematic thing. And as long as you're not getting attacked <laughs> in your bomber, you know, it's nice to have uh, that little thing and just watch the bombs fall. It's kind of relaxing in a weird way. Uh, very odd, it's relaxing to watch bombs fall. But anyway. Uh, sometimes if the bomb was moving at a certain rate or if it was a specific bomb, it, you wouldn't actually be able to see it <clears throat> in the, uh, in the camera. The camera would actually be offset, kind of like how sometimes in replays it's offset. And that's, you know, really, really annoying. Something to also mention, uh, just from a video creation point of view would be lovely if we got like rewind in replays or even if you could just go to specific points in the replays and then just go from there my god that would be pucker like because 
I there are so many times where I want to record just one little thing, and I'm like a few frames off, and it's just like, oh god damn, I have to restart the whole damn thing. A bug where, at low screen resolutions, not all nations were visible in the surface record screen has been fixed. Lovely. Well, now we have a new UI as well, uh, which has just been ported over from the dev server. So that that is, uh, I think that UI is nice as well. It's going to take a while to get used to, but it does mean that there is more expansion for other nations. And since uh, one of the key things that they want to do in 2019 is add more nations, then it makes sense. Uh, a bug occurring... When firing guided missiles from helicopters at long distances, where well, the positions of ground vehicles in the client and on the server could vary, has been fixed. <laughs> well, yeah, this is um, this is a, a bit of a problem uh, sometimes, and you'll see this kind of as an occurring bug where uh, you will shoot at something and it's not actually where it's supposed to be. And uh, this generally happens at longer distances. Uh, you may have seen if you played high tier ships like destroyers, uh, destroyers like going like this, you know where they're, they're kind of, it looks like they're juttering across the screen. That is because on the server and on the other person's end, they're in slightly different places, so they're jiggling. And that means it can be harder to hit because you don't know which one's real, and also uh, it can also not register you hit it. Sorry, you are hitting shots. So hopefully that gets fixed as well, along with the guided missiles. A bug occurring with some vehicles equipped with guided missiles in RB mode when there was an ability for some time to control the missile with the mouse has been fixed. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, God, that would have been... I'm guessing they're talking about the uh, bullpups there. Uh, a bug when playing ground vehicles where inversion wouldn't work when the mouse view mode was activated has been fixed. Well, that's good as well. All of these are great additions. Just remember, uh, when people say they don't do any bug fixes, yes, they do. Go and look at them. Uh, a bug which would result in the flickering of the reload icon for first order ammo racks has been fixed. Thank God. I don't even know whether that was a bug or what caused that, but that was just one of those minor annoyances that is nice to you know, get out of War Thunder. One of the big issues with games is uh, one thing that your eyes will always be attracted to while gaming or even watching a movie is something flickering. Like if you have, um, if you have, let's say, a picture of a room or sorry, a video of a room and there's a flickering light, you'll just, you'll concentrate all the time on that light. Or if you have like a picture which keeps like switching, You'll, you'll constantly be looking at that. So it's nice to get that out of the game uh, because it means that you can focus on other parts of it without having to worry about the flickering subconsciously. A bug where it was possible to unlock the adamant achievement when you were fired upon by allied vehicles and ground RP forces has been fixed. Well, that <laughs> that's funny. With uh, the, ad <laughs> with the uh, addition of update 1.85, they've actually taken away team killing in air AB and I'm wondering if they're going to add it in air RB. Uh, but in Ground RB, obviously, uh, we got team killing got taken out a long time ago. You can still team kill uh, with artillery, uh, but that's not seen as your fault, or at least more of your fault. Uh, whereas if you just turn around and smash somebody in the face, of course, uh, that's going to be seen as your fault. Um, a bug which would occur during the repair of ground vehicles in a capture point where the hint regarding the calling of allied units to assist in repairing your vehicle intended for when you're outside of the allied capture points would be shown despite being repaired within a capture point at the same time has been fixed. Well, that's good. Uh, generally, with the new mechanics in the game, such as this repair assist thing, uh, sometimes it is going to uh, be kind of annoying, uh, or there's going to be bugs with it. It's nice to see that they are, you know, being fixed. A bug during replays where the from the player view wouldn't always be shown correctly has been fixed. Hallelujah. Because one one of the things I like to do is uh, user missions to get some footage, or user missions, or custom missions, and uh, sometimes... From the player view, it literally means I'm stuck inside of the engine, or I'm, like, upside down. Like, I, I don't know what was causing it, but it's nice to see that it is now fixed. An indicator, there's actually a lot of bugs here which have been around for, like, a few years, uh, at least I can think of. So it's nice to see they're finally getting around to some of the old ones. A indicator which advises that crew viewing distances have been reduced because the tank's commander was knocked out has been added for ground vehicles. So if you didn't know this, in the bottom left there is now uh there is now like a binoculars thing and uh once somebody dies such as the commander 
uh, there, there's actually two things. There's the first one, which tells you that you've been scouted. I believe this is only in uh, Ground AB. And then there's another one, which shows that your uh, your view range has been reduced, basically, and because your commander has been shot in the head. So this has meant that now we have a visual aid which helps us understand our viewing distance in uh, ground forces. So the mechanic was always there, but now we have, you know, we can actually see it on the screen, we can use it for information, and we can use it to push forward and I'm very happy about that the more information the better when it comes to how these vehicles work the ability to restart a replay has been added to the replay menu that's good uh, now uh, it would be easier to uh, get back to those frames that I've missed a bug occurring in ground RB battles where the effect of directing a shot at a particular place on the client could differ from the direction of the shot on the server as I said this is another issue with uh, your computer and the server not interacting correctly so if that is fixed thank god because the there is a lot of times, and I would say like a year ago at this point, or even two years ago, where I would be driving stuff like a Pershing, and I would hit the Tiger 2H on the flat part of the turret, where it should go straight through, but because his tank had shimmied either his turret one way or another, but on my side, I couldn't see that, it would bounce on my end what looked like off the flat part. Now, if that has been fixed, thank God. The crew panel in the hangar has been updated, good. An icon displaying the selected torpedo launch mode has been added to the action panel for naval battles. So that's basically talking at the bottom. Uh, it's uh, another way uh, you can either select a single torpedo or you can select them all. And if you select them all, uh, it pretty much sets up like an automated where this torpedo goes or where it should go. Uh, whereas if you... Uh, if you select a single torpedo, you have much more manual control. I think overall it's, uh, I mean, I understand why they've done it. So it just makes it uh, easier for the people who aren't so good with torpedoes. But personally, I don't like automated systems. I would much prefer manual control on everything, even with these ships, which are larger. An authorization button in the client through the Gaijin single sign-in portal as a single entry point for Gaijin products has been added. So that makes it easier to get to the Gaijin single uh, portal, <laughs> whatever it's called. And then we had some helicopter changes, uh, which seem to bring some interesting effects uh, that a few people have been talking about. So the flight model changes for the helicopters. Helicopter behavior after a respawn has been corrected, as well as the bugs that caused uh, damage to a vehicle. All right, whatever that means. Uh, calculation of ground effect has been improved. Surface topography influence on the air cushion and its distribution from the center of the rotor to the end of the blade is made in a circular fashion. Wonderful. So now there should be more realistic. By the way, this picture is absolutely beautiful. I love the art that they always create. Transmission performance has been updated. Inertia and mass of the main and the anti-torque rotors have been corrected. I mean, a lot of these... <laughs> they're, they're sometimes where they, they make changes or uh, they they add in like details to updates and it's like this has been updated this has been corrected well great but from what from, from what to what you know what how has it been updated has it been updated in a good way has it been <laughs> updated in a bad way what has been updated it would be nice for a little bit more you know um a little bit more interaction with what's actually going on the characteristics of the rotors with blades anchored to the bushes on the main rotor hub control and gyroscopic moments have been increased angles of the equipment Equivalent flap of the main rotor have been reduced for B0105 and AH1Zs have been updated. So there's something like that, right? That sentence, I know what they've done and I know which ones they did for what helicopters. I think that's much better than the uh, bullet points above it. Also, the gliding performance in auto rotation has been corrected. So basically, the helicopters should feel a lot more like helicopters instead of things that you can sling around the sky. Uh, because right now, for me, it feels like um, when I fly them, I'm on a... Uh, an elastic band just like flipping around the place so if that's been fixed i think that that would be great uh one thing uh that um why is this like this <laughs> one thing uh to uh, talk about is um crumpo brought this up so if you don't know who crumpo is he's a moderator over at the tech hub discord lovely lad and um he's basically been uh saying about how the uh rockets 
from his helicopters, mainly the H1G, do not line up with the uh, actual tubes that they're coming out of. And I think this is a speed issue. So if he's, uh, you know, going in a certain direction when they're being launched, it's either two things. It's either he's going too fast, which uh, means that the rockets need to uh, look like they've been launched earlier, uh, or... The other one is that there are server issues where his helicopter is not lining up with where the helicopter is supposed to be on the server compared to what he is seeing. And since we've had a few uh, changes to that from here, uh, I've got a feeling that that might be the problem, where there isn't a lineup uh, between where the server thinks he is and where he thinks he is. So therefore, uh, that's what was happening with the YA-5M, by the way, when uh, with its firing its rockets. So hopefully that gets fixed. A bug when buildings that could not be penetrated by a round would still be penetrated through has been fixed. Uh, it would be nice to know maybe uh, certain buildings or what maps this is on, because this could actually have a big effect on the gameplay. And the last one is another beautiful picture. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, if, if you want some, you know, concept art, War Thunder is the place to go. Like, it's it's just insane. Uh, a bug where the helicopter position on the client and on the server in some cases were different has been fixed. Well, <laughs> what I just said about Crumpo may have been fixed, may have not been, but that is basically what, uh, you know, I was talking about. So if that, uh, if that has been fixed, I'm going to have to chat to him about it. But if that has been fixed, then, you know, uh, the problem solved. If it, if it has uh, not been fixed, then obviously the issue is something else. A bug where takeoff was sometimes impossible with specific aircraft in simulator battles has been fixed. What? Well, there was just so much we're like, no, <laughs> not today. We ain't getting off the ground. A bug where flat position did not change in the server replay has been fixed. Ah, that's quite nice, actually. That's That's been around for a hell of a long time as well. As I said, there's a lot of bugs here that have been around for like a year or two. Not big bugs, just minor ones, which have been fixed over these last you know, few, uh, these last few change logs or updates. So that's actually really nice to see that I don't have to worry about uh, them in the uh, future. The only thing I would say is, as I said, it would be nice to get some kind of timestamp system in a replays that I can kind of go to instead of having to scroll through the whole thing. But overall, I still think all these changes are very, very positive. A lot of them, uh, just before the update 1.85 comes out, mainly down to helicopters and stuff like that, and also ground forces. But with uh, update 1.85 coming out, I'm sure there's going to be some interesting and funny bugs which come along with it. There's always some absolute howlers uh, <laughs> that come out of each update, and uh, we'll have to see what they are and either laugh or be like, oh god, fix this now. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.